Hello everyone, I'm Zishan Shah and welcome to Z Interactive YouTube channel, your own training institute. In the last lesson, we learned how we can set up all these UV shell masks and how to import an external mesh inside Substance Designer. And now in this lesson, we will start working on each one of these objects. We'll start uh, from any one of these objects and like like these elements and then we'll keep on con uh, like uh, like uh, going to the other objects we'll start continuing to the top part left part the lock gauge handle and then you know so on so now one thing before continuing this lesson i'll show you one thing in maya and let's go to the maya here and we in the maya we have this mesh object here now one thing is that we have everything here in the lock like this uh box lock and the material that I have applied here basically is if I go to the upper shade here, you will see a locker Lambert material. This is a Lambert material. I renamed it to locker and applied on each and everything over here. Then I have this small part here, which is basically like a small um, plane or a ground. So I just made it this uh, just in case, but I think uh, we should ignore this. Uh, like there is no use of it. On this one, I applied the Lambert one. So if you remember when we were creating the, uh, like like when we were baking the uh, UV shell, so we saw that there were locker one material there and there were Lambert one. So this Lambert one is basically this ground. So actually I don't need it, so I will delete it from here. And then if I will go back here in my base, like a, like default material, if I will turn it off, you can see that I have applied to each object different vertex color so that later on the Substance Designer can read it correctly. So this is how you do inside your Substance Painter as well. So in Maya, usually you have to take any of like uh, element here, then you have to go to Mesh Display and then apply color setting, choose whatever color you want, then click apply. So this is how I applied it here. But now as I have moved, uh, removed that, uh, under, like that ground part, I will select everything here, and then I will go and export all. Okay, I will here choose lockerbox.fpx, export all, and yes. And then if I will go back to my Substance Designer, you can see there are triangles. Now these triangles means that it's uh, our uh, FBX file is it's not there anymore and you can see it is calculating. What it is doing is that it knows that I am now exporting my FBX again from the uh, like from Maya and now it is updated here. So there is no ground here. Everything is now fine. So this is how nicely and quickly we can work inside Substance Designer. Uh, with link with some other third party applications. Now, one more thing I will do here is that if you remember, uh, we have created all these uh, uh, like uh, different UV shells. Okay. Now, one more I will create here. Let's make it a little bigger for and let's make a room for uh, one more. So I'll select all of these Control C, Control V. And then here, as you can see, this is the top one. But I will go back here to this UV. Uh, I will single click it here. Okay. And then I will rescale it so that it will cover each and every object. So this will be used for uh, if I want uh, um, like a map for the whole of uh, like uh, uh, my, my object here, like my 3D mesh here. If I want or if I want a whole, or like a, a opacity map for the whole thing, I will use this one. Now let's start arranging all these, like I did in the last uh, in the last class. So I usually keep my height basically here in the middle, okay, and my base color down here, ambient occlusion on the top of height map then metallic I, I usually put under the base color roughness under the metallic all of these under the normal map normal map here 
and we have nice arranged it. This is how I like to arrange my uh, my nodes here. Now what I will do here, first thing first, I will take a blend node, okay, and take this blend node and attach it to the height map here and remove this height map, this uniform color. And I don't need this uniform color from the ambient inclusion because I will press spacebar and I will create my own ambient inclusion, a ambient inclusion here. Now I press all key here to get a small connector and I can use this connector here instead of bringing the, uh, this whole thing from back here and then connecting here. I can make this shortcut like connector here. Same, I will use it for the normal map here. Now, this is colored right now because there is nothing here. And when there is nothing by default, it takes it as a colored uh, option. Now, what I want here is that I want to apply a mid level value to the whole thing. Okay. To the whole map itself. So, I need a uh, UV map. Okay. Uh, what uh, what oh, one more thing we can do is that we can go to the scene make sure display uv in 2d view is checked this is checked now we can go back here turn this on by clicking this uv button and we can see all the uvs here now the same uvs are there uh, are here so i will take this one the one i have here let me turn it off for a while so that i can see the one that we just created and i want this as a uh, opacity map so i will take this one and I will plug it in here in the opacity. Okay, so whatever I will apply in the foreground will be only applied in this opacity. Okay, so I'll just go here. I'll take, I'll bring a uniform color, change it to grayscale, and I will give it a mid gray value, like a mid level value 0 0.5. And this will turn my blend to gray color here. So now I can see this whole gray is applied on my uh, the whole object here. But there will be a little issue here uh, because uh, let's refresh this, okay? Because the reason is that if you will notice, this mid-level value is also applied on the edges. So we don't want anything applied on the edges. Otherwise, what will happen? The edges will also start popping out. So let's see how we can avoid that. So first thing, what I'm going to do is click on the save button here. Right click here. Okay. And view output in 3D view. So I have to go to the locker one here. Okay. Material locker one and physical uh, metallic roughness default. Use tessellation here. And as soon I will get my tessellation here, I will turn uh, my, I will increase my tessellation all the way back here and my scale all the way back here. Okay, so everything is fine. Uh, one more thing, uh, I forgot to attach this ambient occlusion here. So I have to uh, take this, connect to the ambient occlusion. That's why everything was uh, black. Now, now everything is appearing now. So you can easily see I have my uh, object ready. And like I said, the sides here are also like popping out. And this is because we have these edges uh, like popping out because of the, uh, like this mask. So what I need to do, I, I just want, one thing I need to do is that reduce the size of this mask. And how I can do that, so there are a couple of different ways. So uh, the method I usually use is that I will apply a Gaussian blur here, okay? Or we can use a uh, histogram select select, or you can use histogram uh, like a uh, or a threshold like a negative value, or or like whatever, or uh, like different other options also. You have like a couple of different choices, but I will use here Gaussian, uh, sorry, a uh, blur HQ grayscale. Then what I'm going to do here is you can see what happened. Everything looks very really crazy. Okay, and 
that's one reason that we have here uh 8 bit so i have to go here to my blend and change this 8 bit to 16 bit now it's all clear but still you can see everything is going on crazy because it's too high so i will go to my blur hq increase my intensity uh, like quality and reduce the intensity and a little lower here after that things are getting a little better but i need a level here so what the level will do, uh, with the help of the level what i will do is that i will adjust it in a way that it will remove this blur part and keep this white part so automatically the outline will be gone so i will go back here in between i will add a, a level okay and i will start playing with these settings here and automatically you can see those uh edges are getting away a little bit it's here because still we have this third part and now it is completely gone i think now it's better so let's make it more solid so this is more solid so now you can see the size is reduced so uh, the actual size if i will go this is the actual size you can see that and this is after reducing the size of that okay or you can say you can like you can increase the size of it like whatever uh suits that okay and what if we go to this side okay It will look much more uh it will look much more uh hideous or something like that now let me undo that one more method you can remove these and use a distance okay now distance will remove everything easily but the thing is that it is creating a like a, a very very bad uh option here so what i will do is that i will reduce the distance to around one okay and still it's there basically it needs more white space here so that it can have more grayer gray value there is le less uh like white space so it's have more gray space uh like it's have it have more black space but because of that black space it's not uh it is not able to push the gray color out so we need more white so that it can have more space for the gray and then we will be able to fix it but uh, maybe like this or something like that okay but still you can see that the result is not that good so that's why I always use the the Gaussian blur method. So let me undo that and bring my old method here. Okay. So I hope you have learned something out of this lesson to set up your uh, first phase. Okay. So this is how you uh, like set up your first phase by adding uh like mid-level value and then uh adding a opacity map out of the whole uv shell okay and then increase the size of uh, of this white area like the, uh, like a, a mask size so that it can have more uh space for the gray to show up so the gray area is showing up a lot more so we will not have that issue which was which we were having on the uh like edges so that's how we can uh have this whole thing cleared upon here and later on uh whenever we need we can use these single ones here okay so uh thanks a lot everyone for uh, joining this lesson i'm really thankful to you all for supporting me and i hope to receive your support continuously i have noted this uh, that many of you are watching my videos but have not subscribed to my channel yet so please subscribe to my channel and also click the bell icon so you can receive all the notifications about the great new content which I will be uploading soon. 
If you have liked my video, so please hit the like button. And if you have any queries or questions, then leave them in the comment section below. And I will answer them as soon as possible. And one request I have, and that is I have noticed that some of the viewers do not watch my videos online. And instead, they will download them. So uh, please, if anyone is doing that, and if you find someone doing this, then please stop them because this will never help uh, me to get my hard work paid off and it will demotivate me. So I don't want to stop making tutorials for you all. Therefore, help me to get new subscriber. I will take off now and take care, guys, till we meet in the next class. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep learning on the Interactive, your own training institute. There's one important announcement I would like to make. I have started three great membership plans on my channel. I have introduced ZDI Friends membership plan, which will give you exciting perks like loyalty badges and priority on comments. I have also introduced ZDI Early Bird plan, which will give access to Z Interactive tutorials way early before they become public. So you will get all these lessons at once and you can binge watch. Last but not the least, I have introduced ZDI Premium plan, which will give access to advanced professional tutorials which you will find it very, very expensive outside. And I will be giving this in a very low amount of price. So visit my channel now and click on the join membership to get more information. I hope you become one of my members. If you want to learn how to create a highly detailed prop procedurally using Substance Designer, so this premium tutorial series is for you. Join my premier membership plan on YouTube and get access to all premium tutorials. In this tutorial series, I will demonstrate how to use Substance Designer along with simple geometry to create a realistic, smashed up retro television.